So as my reviews go along, it's going to be kind of no secret that one of my favorite designers is uh, Seiji Kanai. Uh, he's a Japanese designer who's made very you know minimal card games. Uh, he pretty much works exclusively in card games, actually. Uh, you may know him from Love Letter. Uh, my favorite game from him is uh, Lost Legacy, which I'll probably do in a later review. But today we're going to be covering My Star, a game about uh, trying to become the prettiest, most skilled, and, well, most sought after geisha in all of Japan. So, uh, we're going to go right into the box and get right into what's in here. Alright, well, in case you didn't really realize, uh, the theme of this is you are a geisha who is trying to become the most well-advertised and the most talented, most beautiful, uh, most skilled geisha in the land, and generally the most sought after. Um, some people might be a little adverse to the theme, um, and you know, of course in the modern day and age, uh, some people might even be very reluctant to play this game, but uh, if you can get over that, it's got a really nice take that game in here. So getting into the components, we've got a simple box insert, uh, pretty thick cardboard from AG as always. Uh, they do a really good job with those boxes. Um, and it'll fit cards probably even sleeved. That's the great thing about AEG, about their little boxes, that they work well for what they do. Uh, you have a scoring card here. Uh, the, the game of My Star is played over three rounds. Uh, each round you take the points from the last round and add it to your current score. Uh, this game suits uh, three to six players, and this little scorecard will help you keep track of that. And there's plenty of sheets in here. Uh, if you don't have a pen handy, you can always use some sort of app or somebody with a really good memory. Unfortunately, you're going to need probably a pen and paper otherwise, uh, especially if this map ever runs out. Uh, the rule book is very well printed. Uh, it has all the rules in it that are necessary to play the game, as well as a few variant rules in the back of it. I highly recommend playing with some of these, uh, as it can kind of spice up the game and keep its replay value pretty high. Uh, good credits go to whoever wrote the rulebook. Uh, every rule is written pretty cleanly and concisely, and it's not going to be very frequently where you're going to ever have kind of these uh, different rules incidents come up that aren't explained in this book. So here are these six geishas. Uh, each of them has a unique player power uh, associated usually with the color that they represent. Uh, they have a number of skills on the side as well. This represents their overall uh, power in the various roles of being a geisha, whether it's uh, entertainment, uh, service, or talent. Um, some people call the first one beauty. Uh, I think entertainment's a bit more... Uh, on the nose because it fits better with the theme, uh, considering that Geisha's weird word entertainers. Um, so, for example, here, uh, this one gets double the power whenever she plays a red card. Now, every character in this game that you're using to play with uh, comes in one of these three colors or a non color, or a black rather. Uh, cards will be played in many different ways. Uh, usually, there's a number of actions. Um, if you invite one of these cards to be a guest at your house, uh, you will use their little printed power. Otherwise, you can pretty much ignore everything else on the card. Uh, if you use them to advertise, uh, you will add this little number to the side of your geisha, you know, by putting it on the side here, and you'll eventually keep stacking these on top of each other to increase that number more and more. And some of them have the unique ability of, you know, raising it by two. Most of them will raise it by one. And unless you have these actors, which are very talented and will raise your geisha abilities all by one. Uh, there's also the non-color cards. Uh, these are kind of special ones that are strung throughout the deck. There's only like three of these. But usually they have their own typical power uh, and usually a higher requirement of any color. Usually you have to have a certain number and color associated uh, in order to bring them into your house in order to play them. And what like the Shogun done, does here is he automatically uh, removes the rest of the cards from your hand and ends the round. So that's a very powerful ability if you can get it out, especially in the, uh, the latter rounds. Now, there's other ways that you're going to be able to get your hand built up of cards. Usually, uh, you get the choice to draw a single card, or you can do 
draw two cards, pick one, and put one on the bottom, which is probably a more favorable move. Um, and there is also the ability to do that advertise, which essentially you have to play a card on your geisha to boost stats, but then you also have to draw a card. So you're constantly moving these cards around in the game. And the point of it all is eventually just to empty your hand of cards. Uh, and that's how the round is going to end. And any cards you have left are going to count against you. And you're going to be playing against you know your opponents around the table and try to do the best. Uh, you know, if you can score in more points than everyone else, you will win. So we're going to go into these uh, Geisha player powers a little bit. Um, the numbers are all fairly well balanced amongst them. However, some people have complained that the player powers themselves kind of favor certain strategies over another. And yeah, that's true. Uh, but thankfully, you know, you're not always stuck with these if you're playing by a certain variant. Normally, you're going to get one of these, you're going to either draft them or draw them out randomly to people and they're going to be stuck with them. I'm just looking in the back of the book for the variant uh, in which you kind of get a chance to pick your geisha for the round, and that will greatly uh, mitigate that player luck balance that some people seem to argue with in this game. Okay, so now that's all off my chest, I'm going to go right into the final thoughts. Alright, so my star. Uh, comes as no surprise, it's a take that style card game. There's a lot of actions in here which you're going to use to uh, screw your neighbor, or screw the leader. Um, but really, truly, it's it's a lot better than some other take that games I have in my collection. You know, a lot of people point at Munchkin and say that one's really random and very samey. Uh, my star has kind of just all that feeling of a Munchkin style game in a single box, and it's something where. It's going to do really well with repetitive plays with the same group. So you're going to figure out some strategies, how best to deal with each individual geisha, uh, how to uh, really develop a strategy in the long run. Now, I suggest playing with a few of the variants in the back of the book as well, um, as playing with one geisha can get kind of... Uh, it's, it's hard to compete, and the points will start to vary, and not all the powers are all that balanced very well. So we're going to break it into the final review right now. Art, you know, great artwork in this game. Good graphic design. It's going to be a solid, you know, 9 out of 10 here. You can't go wrong with it. They lifted it right from the Legend of the Five Rings artwork. It fits right in that universe, but yet it still feels like it could come from our, you know, day and age and what we thought is ancient culture in Japan. Um, <sighs> there's not a lot else to say about it. There's just really solid artwork in this one. Now, component-wise, uh, component-wise, it's just a bunch of cards in a nice thick box. Uh, these cards are built relatively hardly. They're not too thin, not too thick, not too much gloss on them either. And they'll just have quite a few shuffles. Uh, you're probably not going to need to sleeve these until you've played this deck maybe about 50 times. Uh, or at least, you know, 100 shuffles. <laughs> so, very good components there. The rule book uh, explains everything fairly well. Uh, it'll explain each situation well enough, and it's pretty well written. Uh, you can't really argue with it. So, component-wise, we're going to go... Mm, I would like to see a better divider, or maybe some sort of better scoring pad for this, because this is a little <laughs> thing that's double-sided. It works, but ultimately it can get confusing for some people who uh, can't keep track of scores from multiple rounds very easily. Um, I can't argue with it though, because I have the same thing in my Agricola games and stuff like that. So, components, again, solid nine. You can't really know much above what they give you in the box. It's pretty great. Mechanics. Oh, how I wish <laughs> the geishas were a bit better balanced sometimes. There's a lot of card drawing and trying to build up your optimal hands to get a lot of combos. Uh, <laughs> you really gotta know what abilities you want to play on yourself or on others. You know, sometimes it's good to draw a lot of cards, and sometimes it's good to not draw cards and force other people to draw cards. Uh, you want to always play Ronin's down on yourself. 
Uh, that's pretty much always a given, but usually you can either afford it or you can't. So it's up to you whether you're going to hold on to them or if you're going to use like a player power or a discard to kind of go through that deck and pick out stuff. Um, the game's mechanics usually end up having somebody win via, you know, playing all their cards from their hand. Uh, very rarely have I ever gotten to the thing where you've gotten to the bottom of the deck. And that's the thing, that this is a dynamic deck. It's going to be changing every time you shuffle it, but as players use their powers, it's going to start to get you know, more mitigated towards what they're building towards their special talents for. So, you know, the green player who specializes in green things is going to obviously take a lot of green cards. Or, you know, the player who gets advantages from red is going to dynamically try to move that deck to have a lot of red cards in their deck. And that's how the skill is and how to win this game. Um, I wish there was a bit more to it than a take that style card game, but you really can't ask for much out of the small box. And for the retail price of you know twenty dollars, it's really a great game uh, for all that. So if you're looking for a good take that style card game, you know you can rate this a little higher than what I have. But if you're looking for something to like continually bring to a coffee night, um, this could get a little annoying with certain crowds, but it also could be favorable among them. Uh, I'm going to give this a solid 6. Uh, mechanics on their own are not going to keep it uh, replayable um, through multiple rounds of play if you continually do it. Uh, you're going to have to get either really skillful and work with a good group of people, or you're going to have to shuffle things around a lot more and make sure you play with those dynamic uh, game rounds where everyone's getting a new geisha or they get to hire somebody and that way they can build those strategies a bit more. Uh, so out of the box I say play with that variant. <laughs> Just don't even bother with the original because if you're stuck with one geisha the entire game uh, you're going to get bored, you're going to get hurt by it. Uh, so the baseline it would be six if you're diversifying a bit more and really kind of competitively playing and using these special powers and mixing that up uh, every round. Uh, I can give it a good 7. It makes the game a lot better with that. Oh, so that comes down to replayability. Um, again, this is a take that style card game. It, you're going to play three rounds, which can take a while. Uh, it estimates half hour on the box. It's more like 45 minutes, uh, depending on if you're playing with an experienced group or not, it can take even an hour. Uh, and a lot of people might get soured after the first round, so... <laughs> I'm going to have to give this one a 5. Um, this is a game I'm going to pull out maybe once every few weeks, um, if not once a month kind of thing, just so it's kind of not overcome its welcome. Uh, it's one of those things, like, if you have a filler game, this is a little longer than a filler, um, but it's definitely got some, you know, excellent replay value as long as you don't wear yourself out on it. You're not going to get anything new from expansions or anything new from this box, so you got to kind of mix it up with different groups of people and really, truly try to convince people to get over the geisha theme just to, uh, you know, pick this up. <sighs> so our final thoughts... You know, I would rate it pretty much on the BGG scale, probably a 6. Uh, it's something I'm going to play often. I know my rating value might not equalize that, but and a lot of my reviews go to 6. <laughs> but a 6 is not a bad number. This is a game, it's okay. It's something that uh, is going to come out every now and then. It's something that has a lot of diversity uh, in it. Uh, as long as you contribute to that. <laughs> so, that's my star. Um, I have to say, Sage you and I, you know, thank you for giving us a wide collection of games to try out. Uh, looking forward in the future to giving you guys some Lost Legacy and eventually God's Gambit and some other projects that he's been working on. So, look forward to those in our future reviews. Um, as always, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, give us any sort of attention that you feel like is necessary. We want to know if these videos are really touching you or not, uh, if they're helping you with your buying decisions. 
or if they're just entertaining, let us know that in the comments section below. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.